This morning I'd like to show you my starter alternator modification on my Jodel D112 LA modification number 13484. Hope you find this interesting. I'll start off by looking at the front of the propeller on the final modification. I'll just go around now to the alternator side so that you can see the uh, belt drive and the tensioning bracket for the for the alternator, the pulley and the starter ring gear all in place uh, with the main mounting plate behind the ring gear out of stainless steel. Coming round now to the front of the propeller and, and to the, uh, the starter motor proper which uh, goes onto the uh, over the top of the uh, crankcase and uh, engages with the ring gear as you can see there and uh, we're gonna... as you can see there's a compromise between the size of the ring gear that you can use and the uh, clearance to the existing Jodel D112 cowl. We've turned the aircraft around now by 180 degrees to get the best light effect into the cockpit we're walking, walking around, we'll have a look at the inside of the uh, cockpit area to see what goes on concerning this modification in the cockpit. And basically, the, you can see there the control panel which has been designed and made and fitted in a convenient place. It's quite a cold morning here at Bagby but, uh, and Continentals are not uh, renowned for a good start in a cold morning but anyway we're going to go through a normal starting procedure, which is to go to the throttle. We've made sure that the magneto switch is off and the key's out. We give it a couple of squirts of the throttle and then turn it through one blade. I give it another couple of squirts of the throttle and turn it through one blade. I'm going to do this uh, four times. That's the third time. And now the fourth time. On this one, we'll give it a couple of squirts this time. And we're going to give it two blades. And with any, with any luck now, everything should be in order for us to go into the cockpit and uh, start the engine. OK, we're in the cockpit now and uh, we're ready to fire the engine up. So we're coming across to, uh, first we'll close the canopy window and get hold of the Magneto key. Turn the magnetos to both. Make sure that the throttle's in its lowest position. We've turned the magnetos on. We now go across to the control panel and we turn on the uh, battery and uh, it shows that the battery charge is not fully charged at the moment, which is what you would expect. And uh, it should go out once the, um, the engine started up. And uh, also you can see the ammeter there. Uh, it's just showing into the positive, which um, I think if, according to parallax, I think it would just show zero, actually, if I was directly in line with it. Anyway, we're, re we're ready now for starting, so we make sure that the, the brakes are fully engaged. The throttle's in the uh, off, off, uh, lower position and uh, we're ready now. So with any luck we're going to press the button and the engine should start. It might stop after it's turned over a few times because of the cold weather. Oh, there we go. The engine started and uh, it might stop. Well, at least it's, it's fired and it's turning over and uh, 
just let it just let it keep ticking over until it has stopped. So I'm going to just gradually up the throttle a little bit and we'll try again. incident there was that um, it needed more fuel. I'm just going to do up the top of it, just tap the top of it, just with the rest slightly, not too much because we want to make sure that uh, the oil pressure is coming up to the uh, working pressure which it is. It should, be, it should be around about 2 bar or just less than 2 bar and of course the oil temperature is low now. Uh, I hope you can hear me my speech above the engine noise. I'm just going to let the engine warm up slowly. Obviously I'm not pointing in the direction that I want to be. So I'll go through this starting up routine and then I'm going to shut down and manoeuvre the aeroplane uh, so that I can go for a flight. But uh, that's, that's all for now and it's good to see that the, uh, despite the cold weather and uh, okay, it did, it did put out after the first uh, preliminary start, but I can assure you that uh, if you're trying to hand start it to swing the propeller in these weather conditions, it is much, much more difficult to get the engine to form. Okay, thank you for that. Now we've turned the aeroplane round and uh, facing the right direction for going down the field to, to have a flight. But I'll uh, take it through the starting routine again and uh, this time we're going to go across to the magnetos, switch the magnetos to both and then we're going to go across to the control panel and we're going to put the battery and the alternator switch on. Again you'll see the battery lights lighting and the it's saying that there's a discharge at the moment, or it's not charging at the moment, that's because the engine's not running. The, the red start light is actually out. So we're going to put our feet on the brake, so we're OK that way. And this gear light uh, should go red as I press a starter, uh, and, and, and then when I let the starter go, it should go out again. Uh, that tells you that the uh, pinion from the starter motor is disengaged from the ring gear. Here we go. The red light came on as it should do and went out and the green light as it should do has gone out showing it's charging and again you can see from the ammeter again I know that's just playing a little bit of level there but you can see that the, uh, the uh, alternator is actually an AC generator is functioning and the battery switched on. Okay. As an exercise I'm going to just demonstrate stopping the engine. The engine's now running. So the way I shut it down and show the throttle in the low position and they just go to the magneto switches and then turn the magneto switches to the off position and then I go back to the control panel and I shut down the battery and the alternator. I have a feed that's maintained through to um, a trailing socket for want of a better expression which takes a feed from the battery all the time so that I can if required uh, plug in a trickle charger at that point through the winter uh, when flying might not be possible to maintain the battery charge but so far uh, touch wood uh, I haven't had to use it. Okay. So that people are aware of what the uh, alternator will do, it, it uh, provides 16 amps uh, at 2000 revs, and you can see that I'm running uh, a Pilot 3, um, a Sky Demon, and uh, an Aware from it, and I have two trailing sockets to do the Aware and the uh, Sky Demon and then down here I'm able to power at the moment um, a radio, a detail and uh, a VOR but uh, these are shortly to be replaced 
by um, handheld at 8.33 uh, kilohertz.